ever cricketer to score a century on a test to debut. He has made an impact as far as the cricket game is concerned. And many young men look up to him. Yes, I have the man Mdela Hami Hamilton Masagadza right here, right now on Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Maramora Era Crunchy Cookies from Proton Bakers. They come in 500 grams, 250 grams, 1 kg, as well as 2 kg. And you can find them on any retail that is near you. Yes, I have the man right here, right now on Living Legends. Hi, Hamilton, and welcome to the show. Hi, Masia. Thank you for having me. It's such hey. a great honor to be called on this program uh, to be called a living legend I think uh, something quite special it is it is of course and it's good to see you I've always I've always seen you on TV you guys why, why do you do that to your ball <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's one of the technical things about cricket is just to to shine up one side mm -hmm. and uh, there's a legal way and an illegal way of doing it so that's the legal way of doing it mm -hmm. so you just shine up one side and uh, that ensures that uh, you get uh, something called swing so the ball moves through the end, it doesn't go straight to the best one, it makes it mm -hmm. a little bit harder for the for the best one that's facing the ball. Mm -hmm. Nice. Alright, before we get into the interview, I just talked about you uh, when you were still very young and uh, scoring a century on a first interview. How was the feeling for you? Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was something quite special. Um, it was uh, my first my first game for the country and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it happened when I was still at school. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, also having the, the guys from school uh, over at the game watching mm -hmm. uh, made it uh, that much that much better as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just to just to go back to the actual game, we actually had a little bit of pressure from the first innings uh, playing West Indies. Then I came out uh, betting in the second innings, uh, basically trying to save the game and uh, we're quite a long way behind. So I just always said to myself, I just wanted to bet, bet out the day, mm -hmm. uh, which I managed to do. So I was just focused on, on betting the day and then I eventually managed to, to get a hundred and I didn't really know at that time that uh, I was breaking records or the magnitude of what I was doing because <laughs> I was just focused on, on the game and what we were doing in the game. But, but yeah, in terms of the actual game, we then did manage to, to come back and uh, they ended up having to, to fight for a draw in the end. So so we basically came back from the dead and uh, put them put them under pressure in the end. But yeah, it was really special being, being the first game for the country and uh, doing as well as I did. Uh, it really gave me the confidence to, to go on in my career and to go on and... Uh, do what I've done so far. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is interesting. All right, uh, many people just know that Mdera Hami, a Hami Thomas Akaza, and now the captain. Maybe a brief background about yourself. Ah, uh, brief background. Um, um, well, I'll start with uh, the origins. I uh, grew up in Eiffels. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, family of nine, um, eight boys, one girl. Mm -hmm. um, third from the back, the mm -hmm. last three. Are all international cricketers. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, it's it's something that only a few people know. Mm -hmm. So uh, Wellington and Winston have both uh, also played uh, play for the country, but we haven't played uh, together at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only played with uh, with Shingi and then only played with Wally, but not all three of us at once. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I started playing cricket uh, in BC Primary, which was my my primary school that I went to. Uh, it was just introduced to us in a game of uh, in a period of PE. Um, Zimbabwe Cricket just sent out coaches uh, as part of a development program to just say um, this is a new sport that we're introducing and uh, they just sort of gave it to us in that PE lesson and uh, from there I just caught on and uh, I just liked it straight away. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, moving on, um, BC Primary led to, to Churchill High School, uh, Churchill High School to the University of the Free State and then uh, yeah, when I finished my studies I came back and resumed my cricket career. And uh, now I'm married to a lovely lady, mm. we okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm originally from, from Kwekwe. Um, but yeah, uh, she's also family of uh, six girls. Wow, nice. So when did you realize? No, seven. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when did Hamilton realize that, you know what, I think I got talent in this field? Uh, mine is a, is a bit of an interesting story because um, like I said, ever since I started playing, I just always knew that it's something that I love straight away. But to actually realize that I was going to make a career of it, uh, I didn't really think I was going to. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was a bit of a slow starter. Um, at first, um, in primary school, uh, the coach really usually picked me. I could, you know, he doesn't really say, but I could see that uh, he picked me more for my dedication and for my commitment than really... Uh, what I was doing on the field, uh, because I wasn't really as as good as the other guys. 
and um, I did make the the age group teams for for under twelve and under fourteen, and I only started uh, playing for for the national team when I was under sixteen. Wow. So from there, when I was under sixteen, then I made the under nineteen team uh, the next year. So I had three years playing in the national under nineteen team. Mm -hmm. And actually, firstly started off as a bowler, mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually I developed into a batsman. And uh, by the time I finished my under nineteen career, when I was still at school, mm -hmm. uh, that's when I made my debut. And then uh, I was a batsman by then. And then I think around that time is when I realized that uh, I really had something and I could really uh, move on with the sport. Nice. I understand that uh, at one point in South Africa, uh, when you were pursuing your studies at University of Free State of Mind, you were having challenges with school and uh, and cricket. How was it like for you? Yeah, it's always it's always difficult to try and uh, do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the demands of international cricket and uh, also with the demands of school, uh, but I had quite a bit of support, so so which really helped. Uh, the guys at the university really supported everything that I was doing and. Uh, they allowed me time to to get uh, what I needed to get out of my cricket as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a little bit difficult, but uh, it actually meant at one stage I had to choose between the two, and I'd already set my mind on on studying and finishing my studies. So so I had to put uh, my my career on hold for a little bit because I think I only played uh, one series while I was at uh, at university. Mm -hmm. So so bas basically the school took a little bit. Uh, more of a centre stage in my life at that stage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I still did play against England during that time and it was quite good. But uh, also being in South Africa really helped my career as well uh, because uh, we kept playing and uh, we were playing against uh, some of the better guys in South Africa as well, some of the better guys in the Free State. So just being around those guys and just uh, learning from them and playing with and against them uh, also really helped, uh, helped me develop in my game. Wow, nice. This is interesting. So when you got here, you told me that uh, so here's the thing, I go to Maramba from Fortson. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Uh, nice. I'm sure all the, all the bulldogs uh, from, my, from my era will be, will be getting really jealous now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, this, this used to be uh, the thing, especially at break time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah like yes. I mentioned, I uh, went to, to school at Churchill just, just down the road. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, upper break, no. No, I'm getting it. Maramba, yes. Maramba, <laughs> Maramba, <laughs> Maramba, 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 <laughs> yes, Maramba from Proton says, Hamito uh, Masagaza. This is the first segment. Join us after this show break. of living legends and thank you so much for tuning in i hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as i'm doing right here right now proudly brought to you by maramora era crunchy cookies straight away from proton bakers and i have right now hamitan masagaza yes that captain how is it for you uh being the captain and have you faced any challenges yeah you know when when you play sport and um uh, the first thing you aspire to is uh, obviously representing your nation uh, that's probably the the highest honor but then after that, uh, the next thing I aspire to is uh, obviously playing a little bit uh, long and to to represent your country for, for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing after that is actually leading your country. So so the fact that I'm actually the captain now is, uh, is such a huge honor and such a huge privilege to, to be given that responsibility to be the man up top, to be the man uh, sort of driving everything and uh, making the decision. So it's something that I don't take for granted. And it's something that... Uh, that I really, really enjoy doing. Uh, and so, yeah, like just, just like any leadership position, there will always be challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think with us, the main thing is to just uh, learn to, to manage the different personalities. Um, because as much as it's a team game, it's the most individual team game. So, so you also have to learn, uh, learn your players and uh, learn how each, each and everyone ticks. So I think that's, that's been the biggest challenge, to just know exactly how to get everyone going and how to get everyone motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've had a little bit of time in the job now, so, so now I'm a little bit more comfortable doing that. And it's also just, uh, just been the in-between between the player side and also the administration side. So that's also one of the other challenges. But I think I've had a lot of support as well from, from the admin guys uh, 
from our MD, um, Mr. Marconi, and also from the chairman, Mr. Kusani. So they've also made my job a little bit easier from, from that angle. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's been very interesting and it's uh, been a very interesting journey. And uh, yeah, it's something that I've really, really enjoyed being being the captain of the country. Wow. So have you ever looked up uh, to that post uh, in, time, in, in those times when Tetinda was still captain? Uh, to start with, really, uh, all I was, like I said, all I was really interested in was was just representing my country. Uh, it's also the time that I just come back from university and uh, um, I was just sort of make, just making my way back. So that really wasn't in the, in the front of my mind at that time. I just wanted to, to establish myself in the team and uh, just to make sure that I was an integral part of the team and I was uh, contributing as well as I could for the team, just so I could, like, a, like I mentioned earlier, play uh, for a little bit long and just uh, sort of be around the boys and be around the team. Mm -hmm. So do you have a best game ever? Uh, there are obviously too many to mention, <laughs> but I think uh, recently uh, the, the tour to, to Sri Lanka um, which was about two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, where we went and won in Sri Lanka for the first time uh, in a one-day series. Mm -hmm. That was really quite special for us as a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, as well as an individual, because I had a really good tournament, I was actually coming off a bit of a lean patch mm -hmm. and uh, played really well in the tournament. And uh, I was the man of the tournament. And uh, just to, to have contributed that, that much to, to such an historic event of uh, our first uh, our way series win in Sri Lanka and our way series win for such a long time was, was really quite special for me. So I understand that at one point uh, Zimbabwe failed to qualify for the World Cup last year and you guys had this particular run. How did you feel and knowing that we almost did, how did you guys feel? Yeah, well, the, you see, everyone was, was really devastated. I mean, um, we went back into the changing room uh, after the game was finished mm -hmm. and I don't think uh, Anyone could even say anything for like 15 <laughs> to 20 minutes. Oh. Everyone was just so devastated. Everyone was just so shocked at how oh. things that ended up turning out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were playing UAE in our last game and we just needed to, to win that game to go through. Oh. So if we'd been given those odds at the beginning of the tournament, we would have <laughs> definitely taken them with both hands. What could have been the cause of that? <laughs> uh, but you know, the thing is with, with sports, sometimes it just happens that you, you have your bad game uh, right at the wrong moment. So I think... Mm -hmm. That was just it. Um, we did a really good tournament. Uh, the support was was amazing. Uh, people came out in their number to support us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we actually meant we were meant to have games at some of the smaller grounds like in Blois and in Indian Arari. But uh, the guys had to change the fixtures because they realized uh, pretty quickly that with the amount of people that are coming to watch and coming to support, uh, we would have never been able to fit them in the smaller grounds. So. So what they ended up playing in the two main venues, uh, the whole tournament. So that was something that was really encouraging for us and it's something that really got us going. Mm -hmm. The supporters really got behind us. Um, they really supported us and it was really, really good. But yeah, like I said, we had had a very good tournament and then we just had uh, our bad game right at the, <laughs> at the worst possible moment. And so it's gone. <laughs> and, it's, and just like that, it's gone. And, mm -hmm. and such is the nature of sport. Oh. And it's funny you mentioned the World Cup because now it's... It's only like 15, 15 days away. <laughs> All right, so from your own opinion, do you think Zimbabwe cricket will ever bounce back to the days of Henry Olong and Andy Flower? I think um, those times are a little bit different from now. Um, back then, the, the number of uh, sort of weaker teams and the number of stronger teams, the, the gap that was there was, was really quite quite big, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the game has developed quite a lot and a lot of the other smaller teams have caught up, like uh, like I mentioned Bangladesh, back then we only used to, to play against their B side, uh, mm -hmm. they only used to play against our, our B side, uh, because they just didn't come up to the market, but now if you look at them now, um, they're easily above uh, stronger teams like uh, West Indies, Sri Lanka, so, so I think the game has really changed and uh, in terms of uh, us having as much success as those guys back in the day, I think we've done um, just as well uh, as they did uh, in their time and in, in their circumstances. Uh, maybe if not slightly better as well, because uh, obviously we play against all these other nations a bit more. But I think even just looking at the stats, we probably have uh, slightly better stats than they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, a lot a lot has changed because some of the teams that we play against now they didn't even uh, used to play against, and some of the teams that. Uh, were really non-entities then um, are a lot better now. So, 
it's also a little bit difficult to compare the two years, but I think, <laughs> yeah, we, we have had uh, quite a bit of success as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have Hamito Masaga, the Zim captain of cricket, right here, right now on Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Proton Vegas, Salamorela, Crunchy Cookies. Join us after this show break. segment of living legends and thank you so much for staying with us i hope you enjoy yourselves as much as we do and thank you so much for the continued support on whatsapp facebook twitter youtube we are seeing all those comments and thank you thank you thank you so much today i've got uh, hamilton masakaza yes the story is just interesting uh, hamilton uh, let's talk of um the junior policy in zimbabwe uh, is there anything that can usher new talent into the national team yeah um definitely um like I mentioned earlier, we, we came through a development program uh, that was initiated uh, by Zimbabwe Cricket. And um, I think they've uh, sort of continued with that. Uh, so I think that's where, that's where you get uh, your, your young cricketers. It's, it's mainly uh, sort of first increasing uh, the interest in the game uh, with the young, young people. And then from there, obviously, helping them develop uh, to, to being uh, cricketers and helping them develop to, to being international cricketers per se. Uh, so in terms of the juniors, uh, we do have a school system in place. And uh, so you start playing when you're in primary school, you get on through to high school, and then from there you, you get to play club cricket. And then from club cricket, then you get uh, to, be represent, uh, to represent uh, the provincial and franchise sides. So I think that's the pathway. And uh, in terms of just uh, that development, I think it's been going really well because our school structure is, is really strong. We've had um, guys like uh, like I mentioned with me. Uh, I started playing for the under 19s when I was basically under 17. Uh, we've had uh, two guys uh, from Chitungi that have also done the same thing now. Uh, that also started when they were really young. We've got we've got another young boy from St George's who's also got like three or four years of under 19 in him. So once you start seeing boys uh, maturing that early and um, making strides strides that that quickly. Uh, it's very encouraging. Uh, so, so the boys I was mentioning, uh, Wesley Madivere, and um, also um, oh, lost the names. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. Right. Right. But do you have any best combination uh, during the games? Uh, that's a little bit difficult because that changes with, with where you are mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, with where you with where you're playing. So sometimes you have to go with a few more batters. Sometimes you go you have to go with. Uh, uh, a few more bowlers, but with us we're a little bit blessed that we have uh, quite a few all rounders, so it's usually a little bit easier for us. Yeah, but we normally just uh, try to go with uh, seven bowlers mainly and uh, four bowlers bringing up uh, the back. Yeah, nice. So I understand that for okay, we invited you to a program called Living Legends, meaning you're a legend in your own right, right? <laughs> yeah, so I understand that for one to become a legend. Uh, probably these help somebody else. Do you have anyone that you want to pay tribute tonight? That if it wasn't for this and this person, I wouldn't have been where I am right now. Ah, uh, well, you mentioned that uh, we were running out of time. <laughs> no, my, no, list, no. my list is just so long. <laughs> Your but, um, is a show. But, uh, <laughs> but I'll just uh, pick up a few. Um, obviously, first and foremost, they have to be my parents. Oh, yeah. um, they have really been there for me the whole way. And with cricket, it's such a difficult game and it's such an expensive sport. So if they hadn't supported me in the way that they did, I don't think I would have gotten any near where I am. Um, and then over secondly, my, my wife, she's also been uh, quite a rock, uh, quite a rock to me uh, because uh, with sport, you have a lot of, a lot of ups and downs. And uh, the main thing is uh, to have the people around you supporting you and giving you the encouragement mm -hmm. and keeping you focused. And I think uh, she's done that really well. Mm -hmm. And then just looking at my actual career, um, the, the person that really stands out is uh, Mr. Stephen Mangogo. He's the, he's the man that was uh, sent to, to Eiffels to, to introduce the game to us. Mm -hmm. So he's the man that I first learned what a cricket bat is and what a cricket ball is. Uh, uh, he gave me my first lesson and uh, he pretty much stayed with me throughout my career. Any, anything to the Zim cricket fans who loves you so much? Uh, to the Zim cricket fans, I'll just say, um, please keep on supporting us the way that you do. 
I would really appreciate the support, like I mentioned earlier, like uh, the support that we got in the qualifiers and even the support that uh, people came out and gave the ladies now when they're doing their qualifiers as well. Mm -hmm. It's really encouraging for the players when the people turn out in their numbers like that mm -hmm. and get behind us like they do and it also makes it so hard for the opposition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just uh, the biggest thing is uh, keep doing what you do, keep uh, staying behind us and uh, we'll give you the results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming through to the show. I see the, the director is on my neck. Thank you so much for coming through to the show. Yes, that was Hamilton Masaka right here, right now. And thank you so much for watching the show. But do not despair because next week you're back again. Same time, same place with another legend. So for your views and comments, or you think living legend and you want us to pay a visit, do not even hesitate. Feel free to contact us. So for myself, Maslin Bodamakara, the Living Legends production crew that made this show beautiful and successful tonight. Proton Baker Smart, Amara Era Crunchy Cookie. That comes in 250 grams, 500 grams, 1 kg, and 2 kg. Yes, I see how it takes one. I'll also take one to that. <laughs> Goodbye. Show my boy.